are too faithful to fail. Oh, you are too faithful. You are too faithful to fail me. Too faithful, Lord. Hey. You are too faithful to disappoint. Too faithful to disappoint me, Lord. Hey. You've proven yourself in my life, and I've come to realize. You're too, too faithful, faithful to fail me. Oh, you're too faithful. You're too, too faithful, faithful to fail me. Too faithful, Lord. You're too faithful to disappoint me. Yeah. You've proven yourself in my life. And I've come to realize You're too faithful to fail me You're too faithful, Lord You're too faithful to fail me Hallelujah You're too faithful to disappoint me Yes, Jesus, you prove yourself in my life, and I've come to realize you're too faithful to fail me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, I want us to share the word of God briefly. Spirit and you. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit and you. This is this will be a day that will change your life totally. You better believe it. start from John chapter 14. John 14, I'm reading for you verse verse uh -huh. let me start from verse 24 John 14, 24 He that loves me oh, 
Okay. Let's pick it from 23 for God's sake. Jesus answered and said, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. We will come and dwell with that man. Okay? We will come make our home in that man. If the man loves me, he will keep my word, and then I will make him my home. Me and my father. In other words, you will host him. You are his host. And, and just saying you are his host doesn't mean he will remain your guest. No. After a while, you realize you know, he's not just hosting a guest, he owns the place. Alright? Because your body and spirit belongs to him. So he's really coming home. Do you understand? Yes. So you are not a guest in your home. You are the owner. Do you understand this? Including your own uh, home, where you go to your parents or wherever. Uh, you don't always spend your whole day asking for permission to do things. C- can, I, can I open the fridge? Can I turn on the TV? Can I have tea? The person there is going to say, it's your home. Feel free. Are you here? So the Holy Spirit is home in us. However he chooses to lead us. We are like water. Do you understand? We are like water. We take the shape of this. Do you understand? Yes. How he directs. I am, I am like fluid, flexible. You're hearing me? Yes. He tells me, flow this way. That's how I will go. And in a service like today, I am like a surfer. The, the man that goes to the beach to surf. I know what that man does by the beach. He waits for waves. And when the wave shows up, he rides on it. Alright? So in a service like this, I'm like that surfer. I'm waiting for a wave. When it's here, I will tell you. <laughs> when the wave arrives, I will tell you, let's ride it. <laughs> let's ride that wave. Glory to God. So, just to help you know that you are his home. You are hosting the Father. You are hosting the Spirit. Then he said in verse 24, He that loves me, he, lo- he that loves me not, keeps not my sayings. The word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. I am teaching you on the Holy Spirit and you. Okay? You and the Holy Spirit. Then he said, verse 25, These things I have spoken unto you, being present with you. Okay? I have spoken these things to you. Verse 26, But the Comforter, which is, or who is, the Holy Spirit. Alright? Whom the Father will send in my name. See, the Holy Spirit is sent in the name of Jesus. Uh, That means he is Jesus to me. Are you hearing me? The Holy Spirit is a Jesus on earth today. He is, he is being sent on his behalf. Let me put it this way so you will understand it better. There is something better than having Jesus physically on earth. There is something better than that. It is the Holy Spirit in the heart of man. The Spirit of the Lord in the heart of a man is something more than good. Something more than good. Something more than good. The Spirit of the Lord in the heart of a man is something more than good. That's true. When the Holy Ghost is in the heart of a man, it's something more than God. It's precious. That's the point I want to bring home. Oh, you're here? That's the point I want to bring home. Hallelujah. You guys got me singing already. Say, the comforter, who is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Most people don't see small small things in the scriptures. The Holy Spirit teaches all things, not a few things. 
the Holy Spirit. So we've reduced him to be a teacher of only the Bible. And yet he teaches all things. I get to my business. My business is part of all things. Everything I'm doing in this life is part of all things. And the Holy Spirit is a teacher. And the best teacher there is. Alright? You know why he's the best teacher? Because he is able to speak to the simple and they get understanding. The Holy Spirit is so good that even if someone doesn't know one plus one, he can teach them and they become the best. He is so good at teaching because he's patient, okay? And then he is simple. Do you understand me? Yes. Let me show you just, just something here to help you know how important the Holy Spirit is. God, are you listening? God, God with all his bigness, the almighty God, in the book of Exodus, or is it? Yes, it's Exodus, when God came down on Mount Sinai. And then, listen to this. God said, because the people said, we want to also hear God. So Moses said, okay. People said they want to hear you, God. God said, all right. If it's me that want to hear, tell them to sanctify themselves three days. I'll visit them. Okay? This is what was not a friendly visit per se. Okay? Because of how God showed up that day. Alright? Three days he said, don't touch your wife. Not even an animal should come at the foot of that mountain. Because I'm visiting. And the people gathered the third day to wait for the Lord. And the Lord started coming. The mountains were shaking. Before he could get there. The mountain was shaking and burning, literally fire. The children of Israel started running away. They came to speak to him. They said to Moses, if that's how he is like, go listen to him for us. But the New Testament told us the sight was so terrible, Moses himself was afraid. Alright? The man that has known God in the because I need you know there is a message one of these days I will preach that will help people. The message that God is not a man. Because most people think God is a man. <laughs> Alright? Once you begin to teach that, you will understand when we say he is mighty in battle. He doesn't fight with human weapons. He's better than that. Do you understand? He is way ahead of man. So God started coming down and they were afraid. Anyway, Moses gathered up his courage, went to speak with the Lord. But watch what the Holy Spirit does. You're here? When the Holy Spirit comes in your heart, ah, you're no longer afraid of that God. Because number one, because of the Holy Spirit, you are now born again. Because of him, you now have the nature of the Father. Righteousness is boldness to study the presence of God without being guilty. That's what righteousness does. Righteousness rids you of fear of condemnation and guilt in his presence. You're hearing me? Because of righteousness, you face God. In fact, God can now boldly tell us, come boldly. Not like the children of Israel. You be bold when you come to me. I don't come to Mount Sinai. Come to the throne. <laughs> Are you hearing me? And come confidently. Because of the Holy Spirit. Huh? You're here? Because of the Holy Spirit, I have the audacity to say, I carry God. Do you know what that means? If those children of Israel today resurrected, the people that saw that sight, ran away from it. And I said, what you are seeing? I carry him. He said, what? What you are running from, have become his home. And he can be as fierce as he is in me. Are you understanding this? Yes. Now, Bible said in Ephesians, said, you become the habitation of God. How? By the Spirit. Now, God dwells in you by the Holy Spirit. So that's the point I want to emphasize that the Holy Spirit and you, the Holy Ghost has done a lot for us. He shall teach you, verse 26, all things and bring all things 
to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Hallelujah. When I have the Holy Spirit, I don't forget the lessons of God. You know, Bible said, uh, he being James 1, not a forgetful hearer. Because of the Holy Spirit, I cannot be a forgetful hearer. Alright? But a doer of the word. Once you are doer, you cannot forget what you do. You hear me? When you're doing the word of God, it's impossible to forget it. When you're practicing it, hmm? you see how difficult it is to forget what you had for breakfast? That's how difficult it should be for you to forget what God has taught you. Because you're literally eating it. It's become one with you. You don't lose it. Okay? Now he says, He shall teach you all things whatsoever I have sent to you. Now I wanted you to see that number one, the Holy Spirit came in the name of Jesus. Number two, He's a teacher of all things. The best teacher. Alright? The best teacher. Here's another thing I want to show you. John 14. Well, before I can read John 14 for you, look at uh, Luke. Look at Luke. Hallelujah. Look at Luke chapter 24. You know, by the end of today, you will do extraordinary things. I'm telling you, by the time I'm done with you today, Dele, those hands will work wonders. Do you understand me? By the time we finish today, you will be like Jesus. You meet a man with empty cobos. You make mud and say, here are your two eyes. From mud, you make eyes. It's called the working of miracles. It's the work of the Holy. You know what is the working of miracles? It's the Holy Spirit taking you over and creating with you practically. People are watching you do it. He takes over. You begin to do exactly what God was doing in Genesis by the gift of the working of miracles. That's a different gift from the gift of faith. The gift of faith is not the common faith you have in Romans 10, 17. That faith comes by hearing. That's a different faith. The gift of faith is a supernatural faith impacted by God for a certain moment. When that is impacted for that moment, you speak like a God. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> when it's impacted, you begin to declare things that people like, what? What is this man saying? Let me give you an example. In the Old Testament, the guys needed water. The, the brook had dried. There was no water in the land. And the man, the gift of faith was impacted. Hear what the man said. He said, tomorrow there will be water in this valley. There is no well. <laughs> That's the gift of faith. He said, tomorrow water will fill this valley. Say so next day water came from the ground. That's what I'm talking about. So I said, by the time we are through, uh, those hands will be very special. I'm telling you, that mind will do extraordinary things. So when you say the Holy Spirit and you, <laughs> Luke 24. Let me read for you verse 49. Luke 24, 49. And behold, I said the promise of my father upon you. <laughs> I send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be clothed with power from on high. The second point, the third point I want you to see is that the Holy Spirit is a promise of the Father. Okay? Is a promise of the Father. As a matter of fact, It's what you have in Joel 2.28. 
where he said, in the last days I'll pour out my spirit. That's the promise I'm talking about. Okay? That's the promise I'm talking about. In the last days, are you here? The last days, ah, you're here. Okay. You know, some things are coming up. You did well to attend the morning service. You did very well. Joel 2. Can I surprise you? Hello? One day God said to Moses, eh? he said, <clears throat> look up for a minute. God said to Moses, he said, okay, when you go down the mountain, make a tabernacle for me. And in that tabernacle, put the mercy seat where you and me will meet. In other words, make a throne. You hearing me? Make a meeting place, me and you, where my glory will come rest, where I will also come and meet you. It's not my dwelling place. I'll just come meet you with you there. Alright? I come meet with you there. And God, and Moses said, hey God, I'm just a shepherd. How can I make these things? I don't have the skill. And God said, hey Moses, there is a man in your camp. I have given him the spirit of excellence. This man has not seen visions like Moses. But his hands have skill to produce what Moses sees as vision. You're not hearing me. The man can see a vision and build it physically. <laughs> you need such people in the congregation. You need such people. People that will say, this word I saw from the Lord. And the man said, I have the skill to produce it. Are you here? So God says, there is a man, Moses, in your camp. That man, I have anointed him with skill. That was a guy that built the, uh, the, the tabernacle. All Moses did was to tell him the measurements. Tell him how it should look like. And the guy produced it. And God was specific. He said, see that you build it according to the pattern I showed you. And that man was able to produce it. Why did I bring that up? Because that is by the Spirit. The man was able to do it again by the Holy Spirit. You're here? Now, Joel 2, look at verse 28. So I can tell you something about the last days. You, you are living in the last days. If, if 2,000 years ago in Acts 2, 2,000 plus you know, years ago, in Acts 2, eh, if in that day, really it's, it's almost 2,000 there, 19... 19 something because that was like 30 plus years after Jesus has come and died and all that. But let's work with 2,000 years ago. If 2,000 years ago when Peter preached the first message and people were drunk in that service and Peter stood to explain, he said this is that which prophet Joel prophesied that in the last days Peter said this scripture began in the day of Pentecost. You know what we are saying? The last days began in the day of Pentecost. So if the last days started 2,000 years ago, how last of the last days are we today? We are in the last of the last days. And you know something? This is like really. It's like a race. Okay? You put the fastest guy first. He creates a good gap for you. When you hand the button to the last person, he's the fastest one in the group. You hear me? So, this church that's living in the last of the last days, the Bible said, in the last days, knowledge will be increased. In the last days, the glory of God will increase. All you have in the last days is increase, increase. The glory of God will increase. Everything will increase. As gross darkness, gross is thick darkness, will cover the, the glory of the Lord will rise upon you. That's the last days. Yes. In these last days, you're about to see miracles. Huh? Miracles that will continue the book of Acts. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Because, you see, the acts, these are the acts of the Holy Ghost. 
what you call the acts of the apostles. They are the acts of the Holy Ghost working in the apostles. You hearing me? It's the Holy Spirit working in the apostles. And guess what? We have same acts. Do you realize something? That book is called Acts. 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 It's not words of the apostle. It's acts. And someone says, I believe Apostle Paul and all you have are words. It's acts. Acts of the apostles. <laughs> in the afternoon, I'll talk to you about this. <laughs> because we have a lot of talkers in the church. And few doers. People are practically doing the word of God. Joel 2.28 it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and, and on your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and hired maidens in those days will I pour my spirit the last days are the days of outpouring. Those are the days we are living in. Okay? We are living in the days of soaked, drenched men. Alright? In these days, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you will not make impact in the kingdom. I'm telling you. Huh? Yes. Is what we like to call, you know, you know, in the book of Joel, okay, in the book of uh, Jude, we'll come here. Let me show this to you. I have the time. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome in this place, omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in this place, Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome in this place, Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome in this place, Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in this place. Jo, jo, Jude, the book of Jude, just one chapter. Jude, just one chapter. Look at verse 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. Let me show you who we are talking about. Verse 4, chapter 1, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. And godly men, these are the men he's talking about, and godly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus. These are the people he's talking about. Now, already with that verse, we have settled you are not that person. These are not clear. You are not an ungodly man. You have not denied the Lord. Okay? We are actually the opposite of this man. Okay, now watch what he says about this man. Verse 10. But this speak of evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. Verse 11. Oh unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. And ran greedily after the error of Balaam. 
for reward and perished in the gain saying of Korah. Verse 12. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without rain. That's the one I want to point out. These men are clouds without rain. And we are clouds with rain. Bible says when clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves. We are clouds with rain. That means, Del, anywhere you show up, it should rain. Do you understand me? If it doesn't rain, are, are you really full of water? <laughs> are you here? Are you really full of water? If you preach like I'm preaching, people should be rained on. If you lead in songs, worship songs, the rain should be in the place. And you know what happens when it rains? Things sprout. Seeds grow. Visions come alive. Are you hearing me? He said, until the spirit is poured on us, mm, and then the forest, you know, the desert becomes a fruitful field. And then from fruitful field to a forest. Are you hearing me? So we are clouds with rain. But he says, they are clouds without rain, carried about of weeds, trees whose fruit withereth. See, we are trees whose fruit doesn't wither. Okay? Doesn't wither. I'm, I'm ever fruitful. Ever. I'm teaching you on the Holy Spirit and you. Then he says, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, and all that. What I wanted you to see is, the last days are days of outpouring. Okay? And the days of outpouring. So I have already showed you that number one, the Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. Just a second scripture to strengthen that point. Galatians 3. By the sacrifice, you... Verse 13. Okay? Yes. Verse 13, we know Jesse. What we don't do is to read next verse. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Hallelujah. Now we are blessed, no longer cursed. Now that we know the curse is broken, dealt with. All right? What next? I want to show you what next. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, on you. The curse was taken, so the blessing can come on my life. All right? And once we see that we rejoice that, that but we don't see another thing in that same verse. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive. There's a second part to it. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay? I told you it's a promise. Cars broken, you're blessed. And part of the blessing that should come on you, this, this is one of the promises God made to Abraham. Because you are his seed. It's the promise of the Spirit. Anytime we teach on the promises made to Abraham, people are thinking wealth. I'm thinking there's something better than that. You hearing me? Because if you study really the story of Abraham, you'll find out that before God, are you here? Before God gave him Isaac, he gave him something more, something important. Something came before Isaac. Do you want to know what came before Isaac? God himself. <laughs> In Genesis 15, he said, Hey, Abraham, I am your reward. God gave himself first before giving him Isaac. And it is the same with us when it comes to the Lord. Give yourself first before you give him what you have. You're hearing me? 
and you must receive him first before you can go for his money <laughs> and go for a job and whatever it is you want from him he must become your reward and you are satisfied with him first before we can talk about children and I know I'm making a lot of sense this morning that I know he said to Abraham I am your reward Abraham when you have me you can't lack a thing hallelujah Yes. So it's our promise. The promise of the Holy Spirit. The next thing I want to show you about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit is the gift of God for you. Okay? The gift of God. That means you can't work for God to give you the Holy Spirit. Do you understand this? You can work. In fact, the Holy Spirit is not even given because you are living right. No. As a matter of fact, He comes to help you live right. <laughs> you hear? So He is not given because you are living right. That's not why He is given. No. So you, you, you might say things like, I was, you know, <laughs> when you're praying for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and some, they, they take a while before they can be filled and speak in tongues, people start making up all manner of excuses. This could be why I'm not being filled with the Holy Spirit. I am messing up here and here, here and here. That's not why. No, that's not why. Do you know, I think sometimes people underestimate how much the Holy Spirit is able to put up with. <laughs> Do you understand? People underestimate how much he's able to put up with. Because then if the Holy Spirit lives at the slight of a small mystic in your life, God has no right to tell me to vumilia in marriage. Do you understand me? He has no right to ask me to stay in that marriage. He has no right. But you see, with you, the failures and the mistakes you're making, the Holy Ghost is still with you. He is there. No, and he is not looking forward to the day he lives your life. No, he is excited to stay there. He is pleased to be there. As a matter of fact, no one on this earth, hear me now, no one on this earth loves you as much as the Holy Ghost does. Sometimes he loves you more than you even love yourself. Really all the time. Most of the times, you see what you're doing and you want to you know, produce success out of it. Most of the times, the one that wants you to be even more successful is the Holy Spirit, more than you. That explains why sometimes you're almost giving up and He shows up. He says, hey, carry on. He has your interest every time. So the point I want to show is that the Holy Spirit is the gift of God given to you. So you don't work for this gift. No. Jesus promised him. He said, I must go to the Father because when I go, I will ask the Father and he will send him to you. He said, when the Holy Spirit shows up, you will not feel as orphans. Not anymore. Because he will become a father and yet a friend. Are you hearing me? That's the Holy Spirit. He is a father and a friend. And most people, please look up for a minute, you write down, just pay, pay attention. Most people, when the Holy Spirit showed up in their life, they reduced him to what he can do for them. So all they know him is power, 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 power. That's all. They don't know that there's something better than even his power. It is his person. The person is more important than what he can do. You are here? Are you here? Now, let me pick up some scriptures to help you see that the Holy Spirit is the gift of God. Acts 2. Acts chapter 2. Peter, in Acts chapter 2, was filled with the Holy Spirit and he stood up to preach. 
okay and he's been preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching and men are paying attention because i told you these are the days in which when you preach the holy spirit should be present when you sing he should be present anything you do the holy spirit should be involved okay he should be involved so peter has been preaching for a while verse 36 acts 2:36 therefore let all the house of israel know assuredly that god has made that same jesus whom you crucified both lord and christ now when they heard this they were pricked in their hearts and said unto peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do verse 38 then peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you and you shall receive what what shall you receive in verse 38 the gift did you see it there the gift of the holy spirit that's why when that man called simeon offered peter money for the gift peter said your money perish with you for thinking you can buy the gift of god i told you it's not bought you can't buy the gift of god i need you to know that salvation is free but preaching it is expensive huh yes taking the gospel to the people cost money huh Oh this is money we are spending to preach to them even though it's free but you know something God already made the provision to take the gospel Are you listening So the Holy Spirit is the gift of God Look Look let me give you another scripture Look chapter 11 Luke 11 Let me start from where we know and then we go to what is not commonly known verse 9 Luke 11:9 And I say to you ask and it shall be given seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened for you for everyone that asketh complaineth huh crieth what do you do when you ask you receive all right you receive everyone that asketh receives and he that seeks finds to him that knocks it is opened look at verse 11 carefully if a son shall ask bread of you that is our father okay will he give him a stone however wicked of a father you are you will give him exactly what he asked for or if he asks for a fish will he give him serpent if the son asks for an egg will you give him a scorpion this son is having good supper no all right look at verse 13 if you then being evil know how to give good gifts notice that good gifts not that a gift a good one you know how to give good gifts you know what you do when you want to reward or gift your friend huh think about when you want to give your sister or brother a gift on their birthday you must sit down and think about the gift you don't just take anything you find on the way No, you want to make it memorable for them. Am I right about it? You will even ask what they love so you can present the gift to them. And God wanted to give you the gift. He must surely give you his best gift. As his son. And in all of heaven, the best gift is the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? It's not even money. It's the Holy Spirit. Because once you have him all other things that people are looking for you get eventually He said then he said 
how much more he said you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more shall your heavenly father give the holy spirit you see the holy spirit is a gift now to them that ask him okay so let's look at the last part now just to do a recap one i showed you he's a promise of the father sent in the name of jesus and i said he's come to teach us all things all right then i've showed you he is a gift of god now let me address another last part about the holy spirit and you now that he is in your life hmm? are you here now that he is in your life there is a work which he is supposed to do in your life so that once i begin to address that you will engage him okay so you will engage him now first thessalonians Let's start from first. Let's let's pick first Ephesians then we'll come to this one. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4 then we'll come to Thessalonians. Ephesians 4 verse 29. The Holy Spirit is your friend forever. Is your friend forever? Ephesians four, let me read from verse twenty four. I will look up for a minute so I can explain something. I'm reading all these very many verses from twenty four to show you something because if he is going to become your partner how you live your daily life matters to him okay i want to show you what grieves him okay even when you're living with someone in your house there are things you will do and they will not go well with the person right if it's someone that you love you want to not do it again am i right yes and there are people probably when you saw them out there, you thought they were the best roommates. Until they came to live with you. You don't even like how the person sleeps. They snore through the night. Say, I didn't know brother you can be this noisy. And then they begin to become very disorganized in the house. Some small, small things that you know. And now you must start working on, you know, on those small, small things. So that your dwelling together can be peaceful. Okay? So the Holy Spirit has come in your life to dwell with you. I want to show you some of the things he doesn't like. Some of the things that grieves him. So that from today you will know and you will be quick to tell him, I'm sorry I did that. Because he's afraid. I know you have not done it before. From today learn to tell him sorry when you do some of the things I'm going to point out. Okay? Okay? Why this is important is because the Holy Spirit is a person. Just like you can be grieved, Kelvin, he can be grieved too. Okay? He can be grieved too. So look at chapter 4 so I can show some of these things. Verse 24. Put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away what? Lying. Huh? That's one of the things. Putting away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be ye angry and sin not. He said don't let your anger resort to sinning. Okay. Well some people said if you get me angry I can slap you hard my brother. I know I'm born again but there's a place you push me to. You understand? Now, those are some of the things that grieve the Holy Spirit. I'm just showing you some of the things. Okay? Yes. 
So when you are angry, I'm not telling you don't be angry. Scripture said be angry. It didn't say be not angry. It said be angry. But what you do when you are angry is what the, the Lord is concerned with. Because some people when they are angry, they even kill and do other things. He said when you are angry, watch what you do. Some when they are angry, they will not beat you. But they will beat you with what? <laughs> you understand? They will insult you. And that hurts even more. So God said, watch what you do when you're angry. Sin not. You don't like me very much this morning, do you? Are you here? Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. But rather, okay, verse 28, let him the stole steal no more. You'll be surprised to know they are born again people, but they are stealing. Hmm? Yes. Stealing. If I began to show you some of the things we are stealing, you will find out you are the biggest thief there is on this earth. The kind of time you have stolen from God. Do you understand? Oh, how you have cheated him his time. He said, God, I'm going to do this. I'll be with you tomorrow morning. And tomorrow morning, you are turning on your bed. God is thinking, that's my time, you know. And other things. Like in Malachi, he said, concerning tithe, he said, you guys robbed me. It's mine, and yet to eat it. Okay? Hello. Hello, thieves. <laughs> you know, you might be feeling all right, yes. I don't, st- I don't take things. Ah, we're dealing with God. His time. All right? His time. Give him his place. Then he said, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good. You work with your hands, the thing that is good. The scripture is clear. What you work with your hands is what is good. So you don't start doing evil things and say, God told me to work with my hands. No, he was specific. Work on what is good. And I'm supposed to bless to what is good. Then he said that he may have to give to him that needs. Verse 29 is where most of us are guilty. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying. That it may minister grace to the hearers. Look at verse 30. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, you see that the Holy Spirit can be grieved? Yes. You can grieve him. You can do something and he is grieved. Okay? Most of the times, you will know when you have grieved him. You will know. Because you are a child of God. You know when you do something wrong. You know when you do something that God doesn't like because you are a child of God. Look at verse 31. He is not done with these things. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Look at verse 32. This is how not to grieve him. Look at verse 32. He says, be kind one to another. When you show kindness, oh, the Holy Spirit is real proud of you. Be kind one to another. He said, tender hearted. Then he said, be forgiving. Hmm? Oh, I can forgive but not forget. You don't forgive at all. That's what you're saying. You hear me? Yes. Hallelujah. Be forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Okay? Yes. As long as I'm forgiven by God, I'll forgive men. I'll forgive men. Forgiveness is really for you, not for the person you are forgiving. When you don't forgive someone, you allow them to hurt you twice. Do you understand this? You keep carrying the burden. It becomes a weight on you. You'll be amazed at how many people that cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit because of unforgiveness. 
Musa am getting people to be filled with the Holy Spirit and there's one person who is not speaking in tongues at all and we say forgive let them go once they forgive they start speaking in tongues because the Holy Spirit is against unforgiveness you're here hallelujah David said Lord put a watch over my lips so I can watch what I say. I don't want to hurt with words. Okay? Because my walk with the Lord, I must not grieve Him. You need to maintain a very strong relationship with Him. I'm looking, you know, verse 30 in the Message Bible, it said, The Holy Spirit dwelling in you is the most intimate part of your life. The Holy Spirit. Okay? The Holy Spirit. Finally, Romans 8. Romans 8. Romans 8, I'm reading verse 26. Verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our infirmities, our limitations. I send the Holy Spirit and you. When you have the Holy Spirit, the limitations are gone. Do you know that it is pride to refuse help? Hmm? It's pride. Sometimes we find ourselves too proud to even say, God, help me. Alright? Yes. It's like watching your little sister, little brother. You tell them, go bring me uh, that something, something heavy. And you see, the, this little guy won't ask for help. At that very young age, they are proud. They don't want help. And even if you try to help them, what do they do? They throw tantrums at you. They'll get mad at you. Even cry. They don't want help. Huh? Oh, yes. Next time you watch your kid or your brother or sister behave that way, that's exactly you in the presence of God. That's exactly what you do when the Holy Spirit is trying to help you. Okay? Trying to help you and say, I can manage. I can do it. So what you do, you leave them say, okay, let them carry. Eventually they will find out they are not able to carry. Am I helping? Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit makes intercession. For us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Holy Spirit is in an, an intercessor in us. I told you. There is this ministry of intercession that takes place in you. And by that he helps you. Then he says, and he searches. He that searches their hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit again makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. You know what is to intercede? To intercede is to study in the gap on behalf of another. Okay? To intercede is to go on behalf of another. I go in your place. That means I become your intercessor. That's what he's telling you. He's telling you the Holy Spirit is able to take your place before God and pray as though it is you that is praying. See how important he is? And now he does it with you. He does it with you. That's why you must encourage his ministry of intercession. Alright? Sometimes you get home after a busy day and just when you sit down at home, the Holy Spirit begins to prompt you to pray. Please obey. I beg of you. Please obey. However tired you are. Please do it. Because most of the times you don't know who he is asking you to pray for. Most of the times it is you. Other times it was those closest to you. 
other times it will be me pastor Ben you ought to pray if I knew it is me I will wake you up you hear me other times it will be your future days he, is, he has seen some trouble lying next week and he wants you to pray so you can avert it and when he comes to you he says let's plan July with you he is moving you because the only thing he can do is to prompt you to pray Hmm? Probably you're working somewhere at Usla and the Holy Spirit has seen the coming month they'll be giving promotions. They'll be creating vacancies. And he wants to position you for that position. So he comes to you this month and says, let's pray. And for you, food becomes more important. And so when July shows up, you're thinking, why am I not being promoted? And the Holy Ghost is thinking, last month, I tried to get you for us to plan for this. You are not there. You are not there. Huh? Yes. As a matter of fact, the more you engage him with those promptings, eh, it will be easier for you to hear him during the day. Okay? It will be easier. It is easy for him to guide you. All right? easy for him to guide you. Do you know that if you spend time with someone, maybe your friend, the longer you spend time with them, you get to a place where they you even know their laughter. You can be in your house and they laugh or they say, ah, that's Usla, that's exactly how she laughs. How you know it is because of how you spend time with them. Okay? You spend time with the Holy Spirit, you will know when he is leading you. And I beg of you, respond every minute he does it. Okay? Yes. If you don't do, you don't respond, you miss the timing. Okay? Because our mind doesn't know the future. It takes God to reveal it to us. Okay? But the Holy Spirit has no future. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is nothing the Holy Spirit can say is future. No, no, He is God. Huh? You see, uh, your seventeenth birthday is in your future. It is not in the future of the Holy Spirit. No, it's not. It is so present with him that if he starts today to talk to you about your 70th birthday, you will think you've hit 70 because of how real it will look to you. Oh, yes. All right? That's how it's like. Hallelujah. So engage him. Engage him. Next time he says, let's fast. Huh? All right? Let's, don't rebuke him. He's not a demon. It's the Holy Spirit asking you to fast. If you knew how much food and sleep has cost you, you reduce them. Okay? In fact, I love how the Bible put it. The Bible said, a little sleep, a little slumber. Is that exactly what you do in the morning when you snooze your alarm? You're doing a little sleep. Okay? A little slumber. And then another version says, and a folding of hands. Is that not what you do in the morning also? Folding. Say, folding of hands. Poverty shall come on you like a traveler. See? So what you do, don't let sleep steal of you, from you some of these things. Okay? Yes. Rest enough, but also have your own time with God. Especially those moments when he moves you to pray. Don't miss out on such. Okay? Don't miss on such times. Now, he helps us because he makes intercession for us. Verse 28, Romans 8, verse 28. This verse 28, everyone is quoting it, but they quote it out of context. Verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Look up for a minute. Let me go again to that example of a man or woman who God has told, let's pray this week for next week. And you don't pray. You get to next week and they are laying off some workers. And guess what you start doing? All things work together for my good. And the Holy Ghost is thinking, they would have worked if we prayed last week. Are you hearing me? 
if you take time to pray ahead of time then when the the moment shows shows up you will not have to confess all things they will work this is a scripture that you are supposed to know not to even declare it's knowledge that will you know keeps you confident that it will turn out for my good are you hearing me yes so jesus says to his disciples get on the boat we must cross over and the disciples get on the boat the master went up the mountain to pray he was prompted to pray because he was tired that's how i know it he was tired he needed rest just after feeding thousands of people and preaching three day crusade he needed rest but he put them on the boat and went up the mountain to pray the people that entered the boat kelvin they've been ushers in this crusade they are tired so probably some of them were dozing off oh the waves came the boat is now shaking and the master followed and went to pray you know what happened the same waves jesus came riding on them hmm? yes the waves that trouble the boat he's riding on them i said hey guys don't be afraid it is me the holy spirit will prepare you for this moment i'm telling you nothing will surprise you so from today read this scripture in context they work for your good if you are active in your ministry of intercession okay if you engage him in this ministry actively so everything will work for your good hallelujah okay i said last scripture right well i have another last john 14 john 14 You are here and you said you never leave I love you Lord I love you Lord Verse 26 says but the comforter who has the NIV bible I want you to read for me just the first line there in asema Yes, verse 26, just the first part. But the counselor, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. whom the Father will send in my name, mm -hmm. will teach you all things mm -hmm. and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Thank you. Now, do you see what the NIV called him? Counselor. Alright? Counselor. You know, that's what you've been looking for from friends. Alright? You want to do something and you call that one friend whose counsel is always spot on. And there's this one time they counseled you wrong. Okay? He is your counselor. Before you can call him, call me, call your friend, call the Holy Ghost for counsel. Sit down with him. You say, you are my counselor. You are my lawyer. Help me on this. Just like no more lawyers sometimes they'll tell their client here you don't answer the holy ghost has such moments where he says when they put you before the rulers of the earth don't premeditate just on that moment i'll give you words to say he's a counselor and bible says with counsel with good counsel you wage war that's how you get victory in the multitude of counsel there is safety that's where safety is found. So he is your counselor. Listen to him. Alright? You want to do something in life? That's why the first thing you must do is to learn to hear him too. And his voice is all over this book. Okay? It's all over this book. You can't be studying the word of God and not know when he speaks to you. This book will train you to hear him. Okay? And he has ways in which he guides you. He has his own ways. They are not always the same because how he is able to get to me is different from how he gets to Dell. Okay? For Dell, it might be something he is praying for and God gives him a song. 
and he's singing the song later on to realize the song is for him that's where the answer is you hearing me other times he will come in your study time and begin to show you scriptures that give you answers all right now uh, usla nlt I just want to hear the first line. What does it say? Verse 26. Mm. Mm. Now, he calls him advocate. Again, he's the same lawyer, right? Now, if you use particular the amplifier, it will tell you something like helper. Okay? Strengthener. This is his work in your life. So from today, don't ever say I'm without strength. No. No, 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 no. Because you have the Holy Spirit. Okay? Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3 verse 14. It says, For this cause, I bow my knees, Ephesians 3, 14, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, verse 16, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might, how? By his spirit. Can you see he strengthens? Yes. So you're not without strength because of the Holy Spirit. You're not without counsel because of the Holy Spirit. All right? When you pray, engage his intercessory ministry. I started by saying the Holy Spirit is the present Jesus in our lives. Okay? He's the present one. It's like having Jesus with us. He is exactly like Jesus. So much like him, he acts on his behalf. He carries his name on earth. All right? Yes. So when you call on the Lord Jesus, the one that answers is called the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for a wonderful time you've given us to see through the word, discover wonders. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Help us from today to cultivate a walk with you. Help us from today to cultivate a fruitful fellowship with you. Thank you for the effects of our walk with you will be seen in our lives. I thank you, Lord. I give you praise. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.